Welcome to the third in our APM plane series. In the first two videos, we installed the firmware, created the custom looms to connect the receiver, the power, and also the connections to the servos and the speed controllers in the plane. Then we put it in the plane and did the calibration. So in this one, we're going to talk about all the different modes that are available for APM plane. And the information is right as of the date I'm recording this. So it's early February in 2015, but this information is changing all the time. I'd recommend that if you want to know more about the modes and the details, then you go and visit the plane.ardupilot.com slash wiki flash flying flash flight hyphen modes and I'll put that web address at the bottom of the slides as we go through them. This is going to be similar to a couple of uh, presentations and videos that I did for the original APM 2.5, 2.6 and 2.7 series but that was more for um, Ardu-Copter around the modes available for multi-rotors. But as we're talking about a plane, the modes are a little bit different. We have a couple more and we have a couple of specialized ones too. So here they are all listed on the screen, right the way from manual all the way down to take off and landing. And we're going to go through these one by one. And what I'm going to do is give you the main points to explain what each of the modes do, the benefits and where I uh, can. I'm kind of going to put some information at the bottom about the parameters that kind of control how each of those modes work. It's interesting though, if we, first of all, we actually split these flight modes out into ones that need a GPS lock and ones that don't. A lot of the modes explicitly need GPS, so things like fly-by-wire, cruise, auto, return to launch, loiter and others rely on the GPS to maintain a heading position or a direction of the craft. The others don't necessarily strictly need GPS, but I would always recommend that you have GPS working. The exception with that is circle, where it will basically just do um, big circles in the sky, and it's a useful feature if you ever have a GPS problem, you can pop it into circle that give you a time to figure out what you're going to do next. So let's look at the modes one by one. And again, there's the link at the bottom of the page showing you which mode um, we're looking at and also where to go to get more info. And the first one is the easiest, I think, to talk about. It's manual mode. The APM doesn't really do anything here. It's as though the servos were directly connected to the receiver and the way the craft was flying before you installed the APM will be the way it will behave this time. Obviously, there are a couple of extra things that you can do with APM, like you can make sure that you can uh, think of things like fail safe and geofence triggers so that if the plane gets too far away or you have a radio problem, then the APM will take over and fly it back to the launch position. So it's as if the APM wasn't there, but it's there in case you have a problem. Next mode we'll talk about is stabilize. Stabilize is like auto level. Um, so there are lots of flight controllers out there who kind of do a similar thing. If you take your hands off the sticks, it will level the craft out and um, put the wings so that uh, it's not banking, climbing or descending really. Um, it makes it feel, if for those of you that have the, these planes, it makes a wing behave and feel more like it's something like a uh, Skywalker or a Bixler. Next mode then is fly-by-wire A and fly-by-wire B. Let's do A first. It's one of the most popular modes that people will fly in APM for plane. Uh, APM holds the role and pitch specified by the control sticks. So you put the control in that you want and APM takes care of the rest. And the nice thing is it'll do cute things like it'll try and control the pitch when turning the angle. So, so if you actually put aileron in to control a turn, APM will kind of take care of making sure that the pitch is maintained through that turn so the nose doesn't drop or rise, which is quite nice as well. Quite a few things in here that you need to be aware of. Throttle is manually controlled, but there are two parameters, throttle min and throttle max, that control how big they go. Uh, rudders under manual control in fly-by-wire A, and um, if you hold the aileron stick hard over, then it will hold its pitch level and will bank right to a maximum angle that's set by limb roll CD. Now, what's the difference between A and B? Well, let's have a look at B. It's very, very similar to what we've looked at, 
but it works in a slightly different way where the elevator is used to change the altitude. So you can configure this so that if you pull the elevator back, normally you, that would make the plane climb, but you could have it set up so if you push the elevator up, again, that would actually set the altitude of the plane and the plane would try and reach that additional altitude. So in this one, it's very similar to some modes that the APM has in the multi-rotor world, where rather than controlling the throttle, at uh, the altitude the throttle actually controls the height of the model so around the middle stick it kind of hovers at one place and if you increase the throttle it rises if you decrease the throttle it sinks this is kind of similar but for planes where when we are using the elevator control what we're actually saying is the height that we want so if you leave the um, the elevator in the middle it'll try and maintain its existing height It'll also try and do airspeed if you've got a airspeed sensor fitted and it's um, it'll nice, it'll kind of take care of the control that you're not using. So it will hold the roll and pitch specified by the control sticks and um, it'll do nice things again like control the pitch when turning just like it does in fly-by-wire A. So it makes a, makes a pilot look even better than they are. So the difference between A and B is A, um, the elevator, behaves in a normal way where it's basically just putting the nose up and down while in fly-by-wire B what the elevator is doing is actually setting a desired altitude. Not one I would really use this one it would just confuse me I'm uh, too old-fashioned in the way that I fly planes um, and I just uh, start to freak out when I couldn't figure out what was going on. Fly-by-wire A um, stabilizer manual I think would probably three for normal flying I'd probably use the most. Auto-tune, it's a special mode that you would just use when you're tuning the PID settings of both roll and pitch. And what it does, it's essentially fly-by-wire A, but it will flick the wing um, left and right and also pitch it up and down as well and uh, refine the PID settings so that they're almost perfect. Next one is training. Great one, this, for teaching or getting to grips with a new model. Uh, limits the roll, limits the, limits the pitch. Rudder and throttle are under manual control. If you were going to take a, a younger person to the flying field and give them their first try on a plane, this would be the mode that I would set up and hand it to them in. I wouldn't want them uh, to be able to get into too much trouble because then I'd just have to get them out of it. Next one is Acro. Acro uh, is short for acrobatic, of course. Now, if for those of us that uh, may want to do more than fly by wire A or stabilize, those two modes that we looked at at the beginning, for those who want to really be able to bang the sticks and flick the plane around, acrobatic is the mode for you. It is nice in that it will try and uh, assist you with aerobatics. So it will do things like um, if you doing a roll, it'll can with the ailerons it'll control the elevator so to maintain uh, the attitude of the craft and it'll also do quite cute things like if you uh, pull the elevator back to do a roll it'll also control the ailerons to keep the roll nice and clean as well a couple of things you can change here in terms of roll rates and pitching rates um, the thing you have to be careful of with acrobatic is it doesn't mean that it'll save your life uh, if you get into trouble and you stole your plane then you need to be able to snap back into manual mode or stabilize quickly to recover. So you need to have, uh, if you're going to use Acro, I'd suggest that one of the modes by the side of it is manual so that if you get in trouble, you can flick that switch. Next mode is Cruise, um, one that does require GPS this. Um, it works like fly, fly by wire B, but also has a heading lock. And the way it works is that um, it's quite nice. It keeps the wings level when using the rudder and it creates mini waypoints. Every time you take your fingers off the controls for about half a second, it creates a mini waypoint and creates a, an imaginary waypoint about a kilometer in front of itself and then uses that to maintain the heading. So it's nice. It means that you can kind of uh, move around and once it's kind of locked into a heading, it'll kind of try and maintain that heading automatically. A uh, nice one for FPV, actually, if you're going to set it up and go along for the ride. Uh, this is one that you can just really kind of uh, stick it in a certain direction because it's fly-by-wire B. As long as the um, elevator is in the middle, it won't try and sink or rise. It'll try and maintain the same height. It'll try and maintain the same direction. 
and it will sort out um, keeping the wings level if you use rudder to roll uh, to to turn left or right. Next one is auto. Auto is very similar to the auto mode that you get in things like our friend APM Copter or Ardu Copter, where this will run the whatever the mission is that's stored in the APM's memory, and that can include takeoff, landing, go into particular waypoints, performing a number of turns, all those kind of things. So you would load those in via Mission Planner before you took off, then once you were in the air, or when you're on the ground and the first command would be take off, you'd flick it into auto mode and the plane would take over. Can we engage at any time? I would probably use this and take off in manual or stabilize first, um, make sure the plane's happy and everything's all fine, and then flick it into auto mode and have the plane fly off to the first waypoint and then start the mission. Be careful, the home location or um, the place it thinks of his home is where the craft took off and the GPS was first initialized so make sure that you're plugging the plane in and initializing the GPS where you want the plane to come back to don't do it in the boot of the car that's a quarter of a mile away from where you're actually going to fly from uh, replug everything in when you're actually at the flight line wait for the GPS to lock and then take off Next mode is return to launch, it's exactly the same warning that I've just given, make sure that you have a GPS lock before you do anything here, that's indicated by a solid blue light on the APM and what will happen is if you flick it into return to launch it will um, bank, turn, come home and when it arrives at that GPS initial location which it considers home it will then go into loiter which we'll talk about next and basically loiter is it will just form nice tight turns in the sky above a particular location. This is a nice mode to have set up as your fail safe so that if something happened with battery voltage or the radio going or whatever the fail safe kicks in return to launch and the plane comes back to you. Next mode is loiter. Talked about this a little bit. This is what happens when return to launch comes home and loiter is all about um, the plane will circle around the point where you entered the mode. So if I was in the middle of the field and clicked the switch, then the plane would start to prescribe a circle around that point in the middle of the pitch, um, and the APM will nicely hold altitude for us so it won't sink or rise too much. With the previous two modes, as with this one, you can nudge the model so you can use the sticks to kind of reposition it slightly. The radius of the circle is controlled by the WP underscore loiter underscore rad parameter. So you need to make sure that um, all those are kind of making sense and that you're not trying to have a very large craft bank and maintain something like a two meter radius. Next command then is circle, which is very similar to loiter actually, very similar indeed. The difference is whereas loiter is using the GPS to try and maintain its position around a point when the mode was entered, circle doesn't really care. All it does is uh, just fly a nice big wide circle and it will keep doing that. If there's a wind that's pushing it down the field, then unfortunately that big circle is going to get pushed down the field as well and further away from you. It's handy if you have a GPS failure and you don't know what's going on. Uh, circles are mode that you can pop it into that doesn't rely on GPS for the craft to try and perform some automatic function. Guided. Um, this is quite nice, tends to be used for more of a ground station rather than as a discrete mode that you pick from the list in Mission Planner. Um, there's usually some form of click to fly on most ground stations these days that you can connect to things like Pixhawk and APM. You basically click on the map, right click it and say fly to here and if you have your connection to the plane over something like the um, APM radios then plane is put into guided mode and then will fly to that point you clicked on the map. It's actually what's used in geofencing so what happens is uh, you can set a boundary of a certain uh, size in Mission Planner and if the plane goes outside that boundary then guided is actually the mode that the APM uses to get back inside. So the next one here uh, are the two last mission modes. Now mission modes tend to be modes that you can only select through mission planner as part of the flight and the two that are there at the moment are takeoff and landing. So let's do takeoff first. Something that as we said you can only select as part of your mission plan. Specify a pitch 
and a target altitude that you want and it's a completely automated takeoff procedure. What you do is you make sure that the plane is pointing into the wind and perfectly aligned with the runway and then APM holds the heading as it takes off and will then climb to the target altitude that you set. Uh, landing is the same thing but the other way around. Again, something you can only set in uh, Mission Planner scripting, you can't set it as a mode. Uh, the throttle and altitude are under APM control. It'll come back to home. The APM will flare automatically as it gets close to the location of home. This one is very airframe dependent. I mean, super airframe dependent and is tricky to set up. So the way it recommends in the wiki and, and absolutely echo it is that you want to practice this and also have fly-by-wire A mode set up so that you can flick into that and get out of this mode quickly so that you um, you can save the bacon if the plane looks like it's going to stuff itself into the ground at speed. There are tons of parameters for this one. Uh, this uh, kind of mode could probably uh, warrant a video in its own right. I would say takeoff and landing, the last two in this video, are ones that you need to be careful of and take your time. For me, the ones that I am using an APM plane are manual because that is the one that I'm used to. Um, I quite like manual actually, it's quite good. Stabilized to me uh, makes the wing feel a little bit too docile. Fly-by-wire A is quite nice, um, as is um, acrobatics. Um, the way that acro will try and compensate for some of my sloppy maneuvers uh, makes the acrobatics that I pull off look a lot better. And obviously we've got um, auto if I have a mission in. I haven't really run a lot of missions yet with APM plane, not like I do with the copters. And the last one I've gone to use is return to launch, where um, that will be the failsafe on all of the APM plane models that I'm going to use from now on. And that means if something happens and I'm getting into trouble, I can flick a switch and she'll come back. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that uh, wanted to know a little bit more about the different flight modes. Now you've watched this 18-19 um, minute video, hopefully the reading that you do to read things at the plane.ardupilot.com slash wiki slash flying slash flight modes will make a little bit more sense and be easier to digest. So thank you very much for spending this time with me. Please like, subscribe, and as always, happy flying.